everyone, welcome to Mindbrain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mindbrain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today's video is focused on neuronal networks. Neuronal networks, it's a topic that I am very interested in because I think that this perspective may help us to understand which are the specific complex networks that are underlying some specific mental processes. But before we look to this, let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. So, the first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the seventh edition of the Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology. The third is the Neuropsychology Handbook. The fourth is the Handbook of Clinical Neuropsychology in this second edition. The fifth is the Neuropsychological Assessment by Lezak. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology by Laura Gonstein and Jenny McNeil. So now let's talk about the basics of the complex neural networks. Complex neuronal networks are sets of neuronal systems that are interconnected by nodes. Nodes connect a different network with other different network. Neuronal networks are distributed by several brain structures, giving them structural connectivity and functional connectivity. And these complex neuronal networks are responsible for complex mental functions. And these networks have some implications in psychopathology, but I will leave this discussion for future videos, okay? So. So here we can have a taxonomy of functional brain networks. So these are not all the functional networks that are described in neuroscience, but here we can see some of them, okay? So, the first is the occipital network, which mainly is responsible for vision. Then we can have the pericentral network, which is typically associated with somatosensory functions and somatosensory perception. So another one is the dorsal frontal parietal network which mainly is um, attributed to the functions of attention and the lateral frontal parietal network which is typically associated with cognitive control the mid cingulo insular network which is typically responsible for salience which is a kind of process that uh, mobilizes our attention when we are in need to something okay and the last one medial frontal parietal network which is typically associated with the default mode network that will be described here okay so the neuronal networks approach may help us to understand which specific brain systems or which specific complex neuronal networks may underlie specific mental processes so another network which comprises some of these things that we are talking here is the central executive network which is a brain network that is responsible for high-level cognitive functions such as planning, decision-making and the control of attention and working memory. That's why this network is called the Central Executive Network. We can see that uh, this network may be uh, conceptualized by several functions which are typically associated with neuronal structures. So, so when we look to dorsal prefrontal cortex, we can see that this brain structure is typically associated with executive functions such as inhibition, cognitive flexibility or updating and is also um, responsible for or typically associated with self-regulation and abstract reasoning. But when we look to the superior and inferior parietal lobules, we can see that these uh, brain structures have implications in working memory, visual and spatial navigation and sensorial integration. So, this is why this neuronal network is called a central executive network. The salience network is a large-scale brain network involved in detecting and orienting to salient external stimuli and internal events. As I said before, when we have some need, uh, some physiological need or some psychological need, this kind of network orients our attention to the stimuli that typically we have coded in memory uh, where we can satisfy our need. So, this salience network has some ramifications in the anterior insula, which is responsible for detection of emotions, sensory-based 
internal and external stimuli. When we think about dorsal, anterior and cingulate cortex, we know that this brain structure typically um, is associated with stimuli response discrimination and conflict prioritization and resolution. So, as we see here, this kind of network is very important when we need to orient our attention towards excelling stimuli. Another very important network is the amygdaloid hippocampal memory network because this network is a large brain structure that is involved with in memory formation and fear conditioning responses. So, as we can see that this network involves some ramifications in the amygdala, which is typically associated with emotional fear-based conditional learning and somatosensory responses. And of course, uh, when we talk about memory, we know we are uh, somewhat talking about hippocampal cortex, which is responsible mainly for memory formation, encoding and retrieval memory contents. So, and the last one, which is the default mode network, which is a large-scale network of brain areas that form an integrated system of self-related cognition, including autobiographical self-monitoring and social functions. The default mode network is typically deactivated during stimulus-driven cognitive processing, which means that when we are um, doing some cognitive task, when we are focused on this task, the default mode network deactivates itself. However, when we are thinking about ourselves and thinking about ourselves in the context of our relationships, this brain network is highly active. That's why that we know that this network has some ramifications with several brain structures that are related to the self. So, we can see that uh, this network is connected to the medial prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for self-regulating decision-making, autobiographical memories and future aims reflection. Also, the default mode network has ramifications to the posterior cingulate cortex and precuneus, which are brain areas responsible for bottom-up attentional processing with perception and memory stimuli, self and other thinking, thinking about memories and concepts, and visual and sensory motor processing. The default mode network has some ramifications to the angular gyrus, which is a brain structure responsible for integration of attention and perception, and also responsible for uh, spatial cognition. So we know that the default mode network may be the neural substrate of the self, which is the overall representation that we have about ourselves. Because we know that the self have some uh, functions um, related with autobiographical information, self-references, emotions of oneself, thinking about others, which sometimes is called theory of mind, emotions of the other, moral reasoning, social evaluations or assessment and social categories. Also, the self also has other functions such as remembering the past, imagining the future, which is connected to episodic memory and story comprehension. All these complex functions are related to the representation of ourselves, which may be seen as the self or the concept of self. The self is typically a psychotherapeutic target for several modalities of psychotherapy. But I will leave this further description for future videos, ok? So stay tuned! So, neuronal networks are several brain systems that are connected with themselves and these networks have some ramifications with different brain structures. And we know that these brain structures are somewhat associated with several mental processes and neurocognitive functions. And now let's just look to the summary and key points of our talk today. So, we saw that there are different complex neuronal networks and one typically associated with executive functions is the central executive network. Uh, another network that, which is uh, responsible for orienting our attention towards the internal events or external events is the salience network. Typically, there is another network associated with memory formation which is the amygdaloid hippocampal memory network. And finally, we've talked about the default mode network, which is thought to be the neuronal substrate of the self and encompasses several functions, when, uh, one of the most salient is the self-related cognition. 
So I know that I've talked about lots of information because the neural network's perspective it's a very complex field. But don't worry, in the future I will produce different videos detailing about all these things, okay? So stay tuned! Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme, to see the manuals and the articles that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, like, share and subscribe this video. Also, you can leave a comment to say what you think about all of this. Let me know all the thoughts that you have related with this topic. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!